Hey everyone, this is Andrew Tai and welcome to my YouTube channel. So yes, it is true, we finally have Nintendo Switch games being emulated on the Apple Silicon Mac. No, this is not boot camp and nor is it being streamed, this is running on bare metal on the macOS operating system. Not only can we get games like Metroid Dread working great on my MacBook Pro 16 inch with the M1 Max chip, we've also got games working like the Nintendo Switch version of Cat Quest 1, which runs fantastically on my MacBook Air with the original M1 chip. So in this video today, we're gonna to be talking about how this Switch emulator got hacked into working on the macOS operating system. We'll be talking a little bit about Molten VK and Metal Graphics API features, and also when and how you're gonna be able to get your hands on this emulator for your Mac. And this brings us to the sponsor of our video today, which is Ugreen, who have kindly sent me the extremely powerful and compact Ugreen Nexhead 140 watt GAN charger. And I'll definitely say that this is a pretty big upgrade if you use any MacBook. Not only is the Nexode 140 watt substantially smaller than the official Apple charger, but you can also charge three different devices at once using the two USB-C port or the third USB-A port. And if you're looking for extra connectivity, then make sure to check out the Ugreen USB-C hub. This allows you to attach multiple USB-A devices running at USB 3. It contains a one gigabit ethernet adapter. It can also accept 100 watts of power delivery charging and it will output 95 watts to your Mac or any other device. And this is one of the few dongles that has a full-size HDMI port that can output 4K at 60 hertz. If you want to check out this dongle, then please make sure to click the links at the top of the description. So this dongle has a deep discount sale going on right now, and the promotion is going to expire on Sunday, the 27th of November. So make sure to check it out before the sale ends. So the way that we're playing Nintendo Switch games on the Mac is through Ryujinx, which is an open source Nintendo Switch emulator. And this macOS update doesn't come from the Ryujinx original team, but it comes through the hard work of a hacker named Eman, who has bypassed certain GPU feature set checks and faked extensions using Molten VK, particularly the transform feedback and shader subgroup vote. So if you didn't already know, virtually all of the open source game emulators make use of the Vulkan Graphics API in order to function. However, on Apple computers, we only have access to a very old version of OpenGL, or we're gonna make use of Metal, which is Apple's proprietary graphics API. And to bridge the gap, there is a translation layer called Molten VK, which translates Vulkan into Metal. However, many of the Vulkan features aren't yet supported by Molten VK. Now this might change with the advent of Metal 3 with the release of macOS Ventura, However, progress hasn't been made thus far. We are still missing a lot of the features that are required to get Nintendo Switch games working on macOS. But what Eman has done is basically hack Molten VK to pretend that it actually does support those Vulkan extensions when in reality it doesn't. Now what this means is that Ryujinx is gonna boot and it's gonna work on certain games that don't make use of those core Molten VK extensions. So thus far, only a handful of games are working at the moment, including Metroid Dread, Cat Quest, and Rayman Legends. However, a lot of the more advanced Switch titles aren't gonna boot up unless a lot more work is done on the emulator. So what is performance like at this very early stage in development? So it looks like less demanding games like Cat Quest 1 seem to run great on the MacBook Air with the original M1 chip. However, when it comes to more demanding titles like Metroid Dread, the M1 chip on the left doesn't really stack up against my MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip, 32 gigabytes of RAM and 32 GPU cores. It feels like the M1 is going about 10 to 15 frames per second, whereas the M1 Max chip is doing about 30 to 40 FPS. Now low frame rates on the M1 chip aren't necessarily bad, however it did make this particular section of the first level unplayable. I couldn't hook onto the ledge despite trying for a really long time. However, when I ran this on my MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip, it was effortless. So my theory is that there's some kind of physics issue with low FPS on Metroid Dread. Now it's no wonder that performance is poor. After all, this is an emulator designed for the x86 CPU architecture. And so it has to run through the Rosetta 2 translation layer. And in addition, the CPU memory manager mode has to be set to software. If it was set to host or host unchecked, then potentially it could run much faster. However, if you do so, then the emulator will crash on launch. So this emulator with Eman's fixes is far from ready for public use. That's because there are dozens of steps that are required in order to get this to work. For example, we have to launch Ryujinx Ava in order to configure the firmware and the keys, and these have to be bypassed through Mac security. And half the time the commands don't even load. It's almost like a lottery. And then also we have to bypass every single library file within Mac security. 
And even if we do get it to work, it often crashes and there are tons of steps involved in getting this to work. And once Ryujinx on Avalonia is set up, then we have to launch the emulator through the headless Ryujinx with the modified libmolten VK. So this is really far from being ready for public use. So what is the future of Switch emulation on the Mac? So the developer Eman has said that he's going to be publishing a fork of Ryujinx onto GitHub in the very near future. Right now it's way too buggy for normal gamers to use. And so if you want to test this out, then you're going to have to wait a little bit of time for this to become publicly available. Apple Silicon Macs can be powerful gaming machines as long as the software and games take advantage of Apple's hardware advantages. There's a ton of performance left on the table if the emulator was optimized for the ARM chip and if it eventually got a native metal renderer then it could be one of the very best Switch emulators. Anyway big thanks to Eman for providing the build of Ryujinx and talking me through all the tech support. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.